our uh, idea for tonight is think it through. Another way we, we refer, commonly refer to this idea is uh, thinking about thinking. Um, and it's also referred to in the mainstream literature as metacognition. There's actually a term for this. I think it consists of three basic steps, uh, at least the, the way that I'm approaching this tonight. There's three basic steps. They're very similar to concepts that we use in coaching, but some of you have been trained in coaching and, and some of you have not. So for those of you that are trained in coaching, I think that uh, you'll find this uh, useful. And for those of you that aren't, it might give you some new ideas about uh, how to think important matters through. Think everything through, but particularly the important stuff. So the first step in this, uh, this three-step process uh, that we refer to as metacognition or thinking things through is to create a clear description of the goal to be achieved or a problem to be solved. So you, you describe it so vividly and precisely and clearly that you can imagine it. So that's the first step. The second step is to develop maps. Um, this is a term that we kind of coined, I think, but the, the term uh, defined is multiple action plans. So um, the idea is once you have a clear idea of what you're trying to achieve or a problem you're trying to solve, um, you create lots of ideas, lots of ideas about how you might do that. And when I say lots, I'll be more specific by saying between 10 and 20 or more. Um, and then, of course, you would take those ideas and prioritize them, put them into an order that seemed to um, make sense in your logic. Um, now, of all the ideas you invent, uh, which hopefully will be 20 or more, what I'm suggesting that goes into your action plans are only the ideas that you plan to take action on. So any ideas that you're not, that, that you invented, but that you don't intend to take action on, put those in a separate category of ideas we may refer to after you've taken action on the, in, in, in an order that you prioritize on the ones that you're going to take action on. Because if they work, then you either accomplish the goal or you solve the problem. It won't be necessary to go deeper in your list. On the other hand, if you take action systematically on each idea from ones that you think are most likely to work to least likely, and you get through a list and we still haven't solved your problem or accomplished your goal, it may make sense to either go back and invent more ideas or it may make sense to go into your previous ideas and take and reprioritize those ideas and put some new ideas into action. Then the third step is to maintain and monitor these maps that you create. Now, in the maintenance and monitoring of these maps, now again, these are the ideas that you're planning to take action systematically on. In other words, the one that you think will work best, then the next one, and then so on. Um, it will be important to check in on these on an ongoing basis to measure progress. So you start with your best idea, you, you start to experiment with action, and then you check in to see, is the action I'm taking sufficient to get the, to, to accomplish a goal or to solve the problem? And is there any evidence that the action that I'm taking that I thought would probably work, is it producing any results? Is it actually working? Now, if you determine that the idea is not, then it's important to make a decision to move to another action, which would likely be the second one on your list or the third. But the idea is you're always putting your best ideas into action and then monitoring them and, uh, to determine if the action that you're taking is actually making progress or not. Now, uh, another, another piece of this process in, in terms of maintaining or monitoring the maps is to think, think critically about the progress. So it's important to be able to evaluate, is the action I'm taking sufficient to accomplish this goal or solve this problem? 
and is it um, producing any results? And so here's some of the questions you could ask yourself to, to help determine that. You could ask, you know, how am I doing? Is, is, does, this, does this idea seem to be working? Am I in, on track in terms of my timeline? Um, you know, I think that's a relevant question. Now, I know I've said that before. Um, what ideas have I used in the past in similar situations that worked? I think that's important to, as you're developing maps to think about that. Am I allocating enough time to this goal or this problem? I think that's very important. I think sometimes people get big problems to solve, like uh, once they would call some of the biggest problems in their life, and they don't spend much time on them. And then they wonder why, uh, why things aren't moving in the direction they want. I think from time to time it makes sense to re-look re at the order of your actions and determine if they make sense as you move forward. Um, and so those are some of the questions you can be asking yourself. Now I'm going to overview a, a bunch of ideas here, and I'll try to do it quickly because uh, you know, I, only, I came up with a lot of them, and I could have come up with a lot more. There's, this is a comprehensive subject. But, um, and they're not necessarily in order. So the idea here, uh, I, I just want to give you lots of main headings for ideas or ways of developing effective maps, and then just some examples of what that might look like. So the first one is to take on your problem or goal fully. Now I alluded to this earlier, but I'm, I am often amazed as a professional life coach, uh, worked with people for literally thousands of hours, where they'll say they have this really big problem, this serious problem. I mean, it's a, you know, uh, and then I witness them spending very little time on it. And at some point as a coach, I get to say, wow, this, uh, something, something doesn't make sense here. So the idea here is, is that especially when the problem or the goal is very important, to, it's to take it on fully. And this means make sufficient time. It means slow down. It means get present. It means get focused. And it means applying the best of your ability to um, creating and inventing these maps, these action plans, putting them into to, to, to work, and then monitoring them. The second idea is to gather data regarding the goal or the problem and examine it closely. You could even say to examine it under a, a microscope. But the, the idea, again, is to get, pull together information about the problem. And, you know, inform yourself, educate yourself. And do this from multiple and reliable sources. And, and then try to evaluate the accuracy of the data. Because, you know, uh, computers are kind of like junk in, junk out. Well, solving problems uh, is similar. Um, you put uh, insufficient or poor data in, it's likely to reflect on the resolution of the problem or the, 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 the swiftness with which you can accomplish a goal. Also remember that it, it, it's not always easy that there's, there's actually experts in every field that disagree about data. So here's what I suggest you do. I, I suggest you take Buddha's advice, and here's what Buddha says. He says, believe nothing, no matter where you read it or who, who, who has said it, not even if I have said it, unless it agrees with your own reason and your own common sense. So the second idea is to gather data regarding your problem or your goal and uh, evaluate it for accuracy uh, and and run it through your common sense and your logic before applying it. Okay, the next idea is to capture your thinking. Now, of course, Dave uh, has lobbied very hard for all of us to do that on 3 by 5 cards, but I, uh, I mean, I'd love it if it was on 3 by 5 cards because it's sortable and, you, well, you know all the reasons. But you could also do it on, with a recorder, uh, either a video recorder or an audio recorder. Um, you could do it by taking notes. You could do it by hiring a scribe, somebody else to take notes. Um, you could do it potentially by hiring a coach and having her take notes uh, and feedback some of what she's hearing you talk about. 
but the idea is to capture your thinking. Um, and the purpose for that is there's an unknown uh, quote that I got off the Internet today from an unknown source. It goes like this. As long as a thought remains in your brain, it generates nothing but a little e electrical activity. Thinking becomes active and useful when it starts to move you out of the out of the move you out of the rest of your being through words, intentions, and actions. So essentially it's saying don't let these impulses or these ideas just be little electrical impulses in your brain. Capture them, make sense of them, and then figure out how to create uh, intentions and actions out of them. The next idea is to do a cost and benefit exercise. And it goes something like this. Um, what are the benefits of making X choice? So you, you, you write down all the benefits of, of making any particular choice. Then the next thing you do is you write down all the benefits of not making X choice. So you look at it from both angles. Then after that, you, you write down all of the costs of doing X or making choice X. And then, after you've done that, you write down all the cost of not making choice X or taking action X. Then you take all of that data, prioritize it into a list, and evaluate it. Kind of almost metaphorically put it on a scale, like one of those, you know, and see, you know, does the cost of making or not making the decision, how does that weigh out? Uh, uh, and this process, I think, can be very helpful in leading to you to some clarity about what actions to take in order to accomplish a goal or what steps and actions to take to uh, solve a problem. The fourth idea is always, or maybe fifth, is always take some action on your important goals. I think without action, uh, it's very difficult to get feedback and monitor pro uh, progress. I think without action, um, it's hard to practice, and you know, I think practice makes perfect. Um, I think there are a few wrong approaches. I think mistakes simply become feedback, in some cases very valuable thing, feedback. Um, I recommend that you build a short memory for your mistakes. And I'd also like you to remember another thing that Buddha said. Remembering a wrong is like carrying a burden in your mind. Buddha thinks that remembering a wrong or something you considered a mistake is like carrying a burden on your mind. All right, the fifth or sixth idea is to talk out loud and have your thinking be witnessed. Uh, I just think you're going to think better when you're witnessed. And you can do this by a trained thinking partner, a coach. I think if you don't have a coach, you can be witnessed by your cat, your dog, your bird. I mean, uh, most people don't realize it, but there's several types of birds that are almost as intelligent as a seven-year-old child. And I think it's true for dogs, too, and cats. So, you know, they don't say much, which is great, but they're excellent listeners. I think if you don't have access to another mammal, you could use a tree. They're not as good, but at least they don't uh, interject ideas that aren't useful. But the idea is to think out loud and to have your thinking and your ideas be witnessed. The next idea is to move your body, to walk or stand as much as possible when you're thinking through a problem or trying to solve a problem. I think another great idea is to exercise vigorously before your thinking session starts. So if you know you're going to set aside some time to think uh, something through, um, get some vigorous exercise beforehand. I think another great idea is to meditate. Um, I think any type of meditation before or after your thinking is valuable. I think this is a place where you can visualize, visualize in great detail what you want, like you do at the beginning. So it's more of a review, but I think imagining and dreaming in detail is very useful. Um, I think it's an opportunity to re relax your body and your mind in preparation for thinking or to process thinking that you've already just completed. Now I'm almost done, so uh, stick with me for just another minute or two. 
The next idea is to explore the problem or goal from many different angles. Um, and in this idea, I just want to point out that be very careful about either or thinking. I know a lot of us think that problems uh, can be synthesized down to one thing or another, and, and I just think our world is much more complex than that. Um, min minimize group think. Uh, I think it's useful to listen to our friends and our families, but at the end of the day, uh, you get to make the decisions that are best and that you think will work the best. I think you, it's a good idea under exploring a problem from many different angles to seek input from people you trust and that know you well. And uh, the last sub-idea for this explore a problem from many angles is to sleep on all important decisions. Just give, give things time, especially the important stuff. The last idea I want to say is uh, before we take some questions, so be thinking about questions or comment on these nine or ten uh, ideas for developing effective maps, so be thinking about questions as I uh, go over this last idea, is to be practical. Now as a, as a coach, this is a tricky thing to say because you know, we're in the business of uh, you know, helping people dream big and helping them accomplish things that aren't necessarily predictable. And on the other hand, I think we have the responsibility to, to have people be practical. And I think some of the sub-comments about being practical is uh, not being practical. It's likely to undermine the accomplishment of your goal or the solving of your problem. I think when you are unreasonable, um, you make your, our job more difficult. I think that when you create steps uh, too small, you get bored and you stop working on trying to solve something or accomplish something. I also think when you make the steps too big, you're likely to give up prematurely before you've accomplished a goal or solved the problem because it just gets too damn hard. I apologize for the profanity. Too dang hard is what I meant to say. Um, so there's some ideas about being practical. I think it's just a good idea. Um, and the last thing I want to say, say is remember what Cher said. When I was growing up as a kid, I used to watch the Sonny and Cher uh, show, and I loved Cher, and I loved Sonny. And it was, uh, but she said, if you really want something, you can figure out how to make it happen. And above all, I'm trying to give you kind of an overview of lots of ideas that First, a three-step process for thinking through anything, and then lots of ideas of how to create an effective uh, map or multiple action plan for thinking things through and accomplishing a goal or solving a problem. But mostly, I think if you determine what you really, really want, and I think this goes a little ways to answering your question, Pete, you can figure out how to get it.